morning, and welcome to St. Edith. Today we celebrate the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant this morning is our pastor, Father Jim McNulty. Please stand and join us in our celebration.
through the grace of adoption shows us to be children of light, grant we pray that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shuman, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to die with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to die. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, can something be done for her? This servant of Jehaz answered, yes. She has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, this time next year, you will be finally a baby son. The word of the Lord.
of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Lord. disrespectful to women and angry. I became distant to everyone who loved me. 
and I was hiding behind a shell of a person that I had become. By 20, I made every bad decision you could have thought of. Hmm. Doesn't seem like he had everything, does it? And he really worked to, uh, to kind of turn that around. And he did. And he credits it to the support of his friends and his Christian faith. That's how he was able to turn his life around. And this is what he wrote on social media. All of this is to say, even when the odds are against you, keep fighting. Jesus loves you. Be kind today. Be bold today. And love people today. Not by your standards, but by God's perfect, unfailing love. That's what turned things around for him. In the Gospel reading today, Jesus said, Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Don't you think Justin Bieber thought he found his life? No. Fame and fortune. Fame and fortune. And that's what our culture tells us. But that's not what's important in life. That's not the most important thing in life, and we know that, right? And so he actually had to kind of lose his life so he could find it. You know, he had to find Jesus at the center of his life so he could kind of put things back together. Now, he is still rich and famous. Being rich and famous is not the problem. It's putting being rich and famous right at the center of what's important in your life. And see, he knows that's not what's important in his life. That's not the most important thing in his life. Uh, he knows that now. So when he found Jesus, he was able to find his life uh, as well. And I think most of us aren't going to have this issue of being rich and famous. I know I never will. But I think sometimes we get off track when we start um, putting too much importance on something that isn't a central thing of importance in our lives. That can be a job. That can be my dream house. That can be my collection of stuff. That can be my uh, financial portfolio. That can be kind of um, uh, grasping for fame or for power. All of those things. And those things in themselves aren't, aren't bad. It's when we, we um, overemphasize them. We put them at the center of our life. That's when things get off track. That's where there's a problem. So we have to remember to keep Jesus as the focus of our lives. And then things uh, will fall into place from there. But you always have to keep Jesus as the focus. We also heard in the Gospel reading, Whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. We don't always like to take up those crosses, but we're taking up a lot of crosses uh, during this pandemic, right? And I think there's different crosses for different people. One of the very difficult crosses for me has been, you know, shutting down the parish and canceling all of our community events and so forth and having people distance. And I am not making people very, feel very welcome here right now. And that goes against everything I believe church should be, right? But that's one of the crosses I have to carry. You know, one of our parishioners called me recently and he said, Father Jim, I'm 92 years old, and I'm on dialysis, and my wife is 89, and she has a heart condition. Can we come to Mass? Now, I know he really wanted to come, and I wanted to say, absolutely, everybody's welcome. That's the first thing that comes to, to my mouth, you know? But I had to say, no, I don't think it's safe for you to come at this time. And I know he's part of that generation that what Father says that he's going to do, right? And it, it pains me, you know, that he's, they're wanting to come to Mass and it's just not safe for them to do that. Now, I also have children calling me saying, will you call my parents and tell them they do not have to come to Mass? They will listen to you, 
they're not listening to me. Those are really difficult uh, phone calls to make, uh, but that's what we have to do now. And a couple people told me, you know, they got the letter in the mail that I sent to everybody that doesn't tip. We don't have their email. And they said, you know, that, that letter isn't very welcoming. And it's not. It's not. I'm encouraging vulnerable people uh, to stay away, to stay at home, because it's just not safe for you to be out in a crowd of people. And that really pains me to have to do that. But that's one of the crosses that I have to bear. Uh, we wanted St. Edith to be the most welcoming parish in the Archdiocese of Detroit. You know, we just can't do that now. And I take it to prayer every morning, and I keep getting the same message. You got to keep people safe. You have to keep people safe. You have to keep people safe. So that's what that's what I have to do. And I know a lot of you are, are feeling the same way about not being able to join together as a community. We just can't do that right now. We also heard in the Gospel reading, whoever gives up only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you. He will surely not lose his reward. You know, some of the things that we're called to do now are little things, like giving a cup of cold water to someone. You know, that's pretty small. That's pretty small. One of the small things that I think we're all called to do right now is to wear that mask when we're out in public. And that is a small thing. Right? And that is not a, um, a matter of individual rights. That is not a matter of personal preference. That is a public health issue. You know, the CDC issued those guidelines for wearing cloth masks, not because they just pulled something out of the air, you know, because there's a reason for it. It slows down the spread of the virus. So that's something really little that all of us can do, you know, is to wear that mask, to wear that mask. Um, it's important. So I think we have to remember what is really important in our lives. We have to keep Jesus at the center of our lives and realize that what we're, we need to love and serve the Lord by loving and serving one another. And that is uh, keeping each other safe. And sometimes there's some crosses we're going to have to bear to do that. And there's little things that we're called to do uh, to make that happen. So let's work together. Keep each other safe. This is something very temporary. It's not going to last forever. But this is what we're called to do right now. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified in Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us bring our prayers and petitions to the Lord. That our church may shepherd her flock, with love and tolerance. We pray to the Lord. Lord that Christians who serve us in government may place their loyalty to Christ above every political and personal loyalty. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord that when we accept the gifts of Christ, we will realize those gifts may bring hardship. We pray to the Lord. That our leaders, doctors, teachers, social workers, and counselors will bring hope to all situations. We pray to the Lord. For Abigail Tanuki being baptized this weekend, that her family may always be open to the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. We pray to the Lord. That all who have been made ill by the coronavirus, for all who care for them, and for all who are affected through isolation and anxiety, may they find relief and recovery. We pray to the Lord. That the sick will be granted the peace of knowing that God will never abandon them, especially the sick of our parish, the Weevil family, Gail Esler, and Jean Collard. We pray to the Lord. Lord For those who have died and are resting in God's grace, Diana, Ratani, Gary, Prokopacek, brother of Craig Prokopacek and Donna McQueen, and Norbert Corset. We pray to the Lord. And for the attention of Mass this day, for Cheryl Petikowski Shaw, we pray to the Lord. For the needs of the parishioners of St. Peter, particularly those in our hearts, written in our prayer petition book, and on our prayer line, we pray to the Lord. We ask these in all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
Son present in our midst when we are gathered by His love. And when it's once for the disciples, so now for us, He opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The day before he was to suffer on the night of his last supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who 
live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sad peace. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated.
just a reminder, when you go out in groups, social distance, wear your mask, wash your hands a lot, we, we need to keep doing it um, for right now. It's temporary, remember it's temporary. But I want to make sure that we didn't stay home for three months for nothing. You know? So if we are really careful, um, I think we're going to be able to move forward as we're re reopening our, our economy. So be careful. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in everlasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace.